class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing game 43 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the Los Angeles Kings, in which the Sharks have lost 4-3. to three. This is actually the third and fourth final meeting between these two teams which is honestly somewhat odd obviously the rivalry between these two teams has died down significantly especially since the Sharks and the Kings had both been quite bad over these past few years the Kings have rebounded since then the Sharks have not just yet however it's a situation where between two potential division rivals, like some heated division rivals, at least in the past, to only have three games in the entire regular season, it does seem a bit odd. And this is now the first time in Sharks history in which they actually get swept in a season series by the Kings. Not a full 0-3 and three because they did lose one game in the shootout, but this does technically still count as three losses. It's not necessarily that much of a surprise that this is the first time ever, as of course the Sharks in the past were very, very good. And also, they played many more games against the Kings prior to the division alignment uh, alignment maybe last decade the Sharks had played like six games against the Kings per season which means it was very difficult to go zero and six at that point but now only playing three games it's not necessarily all that hard especially with the Kings being good and the Sharks being not good at this point but into this actual game it was a bit of a roller coaster game I would say this one starts off the first couple of minutes I would say the Sharks look pretty good but they're unable to actually get that first goal and then eventually the Kings bring it back and they don't actually just bring it back they absolutely take over this first period where the Sharks the second time this season they give up more than 21 shots in a period here 22 shots against in the first they give up only a single goal thanks to some heroics from James Reimer and as such they only trail by one after a Kempe goal in the second period the Sharks start off very very well you could technically say with this Nick Benino goal coming just about a minute into the period though it isn't necessarily off some amazing play wow what a great move by Nick Benino compared to let's say yesterday's goal by Nico Sturm his line mate instead this was a massive mistake from the Kings goaltender who sort of nonchalantly tries to push this puck away and ends up not getting a lot on it which means it just goes straight to Nick Bonino who's able to, able to easily push it through him so definitely a big mistake from the Kings goaltender but with this goal which was definitely sort of gifted to the Sharks it did still somewhat turn the momentum and the Sharks actually ended up playing a very effective second pe- period maybe not as dominant as let's say the Kings were in the first but still a strong second middle frame however that Nick Bonino gift wrapped goal would be the only goal the scarred the Sharks would actually score in this second period and the Kings would actually get one of their own from Byfield his first of the season and so they would still have a one goal lead going into the third period however while the third period wouldn't necessarily be Sharks dominance they'd still play rather well and would end up tying this game up at two with a Timo Meyer power play goal however it very quickly got turned on its head as not only would Velarde score to restore the one goal lead for the Kings but Drew Doughty less than a minute later would get another one to make it 4-2 Kings and suddenly the Sharks were in a hole however in the last two minutes Tomas Hurdle did manage to score a goal to make it very interesting to bring it back to within one however they did not have another goal in them and the Sharks would drop this game 4-3 they played decently well besides that first period there just was too many of these defensive mistakes which is a you know constant constant for the San Jose Sharks thus far this season and they couldn't get enough goal support to make up for that which honestly hasn't necessarily been that much of a constant three goals is pretty good it just wasn't enough on to the players to talk about here we have the first line of Meyer, Hurdle, and LeBanc and while I don't think this line was super dominant for the San Jose Sharks it's not as though every single shift that they came on they were absolutely amazing they did have a lot of very good chances Timo Meyer, in particular while he did score a goal in this game his 24th of the season he probably could have had a couple of more a couple more one time he came very very close with hitting the post and a second time well I guess this was technically the first time because it happened before that there was a shot that comes and it's like right on the goal line or right in front uh right before the goal line 
and then Timo Meyer has the ability to sort of poke it in, but then uh, the Kings defenseman Sean Walker's skate comes like in between the goal line and the puck, and that blocks it, and then Phoenix Copley turns around and is able to grab it. Basically, there was a huge scramble in the crease. Meyer came very, very close within inches of actually being able to get a goal, but it didn't end up happening. So his one goal was still solid, a 24th of the season, very, very good, leads the San Jose Sharks in that particular stat, but he probably could have had a couple of more, and it was a pretty solid game for the first line though not amazing when it comes to the second line i would say it was a bit of a step back from previous games though you obviously can't expect them to uh, continuously play at such a high level like they had been over the past couple of games in particular matt nieto is who i'm looking at in exact in exactly that regard he had been very good and very effective for the sharks over these past couple of games but he is still at the you know at his core not a second line player and so you can't necessarily expect that to continue for game after game after game after game and definitely this was a slow game a relatively invisible game for Matt Nieto on the other hand his line mate Barabanov I thought still actually played rather well and then Couture was sort of just in the middle of it not necessarily doing a ton not being too bad not being as invisible as Matt Nieto but that Couture also did kind of benefit from getting some extra shifts with some of the top players like a Meyer like a LeBanc because of the well, LeBanc's not really a top player but definitely like a Meyer because the Sharks were chasing this game a lot throughout when it comes to the third line, we talked about how yesterday the injection of AC Mont into this third line really rejuvenated both Benino and Sturm. Did that last into this game? Sort of. I still thought this was a pretty good game for Nick Benino and Nico Sturm, but I do once again want to talk about AC Mont, who again was a little firecracker on the ice. Very, very sh- uh, effective player in the offensive zone. He's not necessarily scoring goals or anything for the Sharks. He doesn't actually have a point yet for them over these past couple of games but he has been an effective four checker he gets into it he actually has some pretty decent speed he didn't get into a random fight here tonight which is honestly a positive for me in my eyes you know it was okay to have it that one time but if he was going to be the type of player who's going to fight like every night that was going to get old very very fast but he was actually a solid player here on this third line and he actually ends up being like one of the better forwards for the Sharks here tonight. When it comes to the fourth line, also a slightly down night for them. You're not going to expect them to win the fourth line battle every single night and just be really, really good, you know, relative to how they actually are. So it's not the end of the world that there wasn't necessarily that much of a performance. I am looking a bit more for Lorenz to step up a bit. He had been really the driving force on the fourth line, it feels like, a couple of weeks ago. But ever since sort of these past couple of games, while well, Gadjevich has really stepped up and Lindblom has been not awful like he was for much of this season. Lorenz has kind of faded a bit into the background, so I'm going to be looking for him to do a bit more to get this fourth line really sort of established at this point if these three players are to remain together, which seems to be the case at this point. When it comes to the defensive pairs, uh, Eric Carlson had been having a couple of strong games stringed together, especially on the defensive side of things, where at least strong from his standards. Here tonight, a bit of a step back, not the best game defensively for Eric Carlson. A couple of these goals definitely rest on his shoulders, or at least partly involved in giving up those goals. The first one, you see him get beat wide with a pretty weak effort from him, and then he's unable to get to the net quick enough to cut off Adrian Kempe from getting this first goal of the game. Then we have the Drew Doughty one. He overloads on the right side of the ice or the left side depending on uh, which way you're looking at it and then is unable to actually get much of an effective back check on the third man back Doughty to be able to prevent him from getting this goal which really was the dagger at that point that made it 4-3 actually ends up being the game winner as well. So a bit of a rough night for Eric Carlson on the defensive side of things. On the offensive side of things he did still set up a couple of these goals doesn't end up with an assist on the Nick Benino one because of the goaltender for the Kings playing it but he was the one who took this original shot and he will end up with an assist on the Timo Meyer goal but still not necessarily the most effective night for Carlson because of those couple of defensive
of errors. When it comes to the rest of the defense, the big news you could say was actually the injury to Scott Harrington. This is a situation now where since Shemek seems to be out for potentially long term and now with Harrington out, the Sharks will need a new sixth defenseman. It's likely that that's going to be be Nick Chichek because he is, of course, on this road trip. He is currently the seventh defenseman and I don't hate that this is going to be the case though it's not as though he's necessarily going to bring much to the table for the San Jose Sharks and as such they were running with five defensemen for much of the night I actually was relatively impressed with Vlasic's performance here tonight I thought Vlasic actually looked pretty good on the other hand his former pairing uh his former pairing mate Matt Benning didn't necessarily look all that great. I don't think he was bad by any means, but definitely not amazing. I do think Ferraro, however, his uh, the pairing for Benning here tonight did look slightly improved. Not great, still not what you're expecting from, or hoping, I guess you should say, from Mario Ferraro, but there is a slight improvement there, and maybe that can continue. When it comes to the goaltender here, James Reimer obviously started off this game very, very well. Didn't have a ton of chances on that Kempe goal, made a ton of saves for the San Jose Sharks in that first period, and still by the end of it, even though he did let in four goals, I will say he didn't have much of a chance on many of them. The Byfield one and the Velarde one were both very good tips in front for the Kings, and so he it's going to be a difficult save there. The only one that he probably could have technically had was the Dowdy one, but Dowdy has a lot of time to take this shot. And while you would like to see Reimer make the save just because of the situation that the Sharks are in, they've already given up a goal just like 50 seconds earlier. They're trailing by one now. You're not necessarily blaming him as much as you are blaming the defense for allowing Dowdy to be that wide open in that situation. So not an awful game from James Reimer and certainly kept them alive early on. But that will do it for this review. The Sharks will be back in action on Friday where they will take on the Edmonton Oilers. And of course, Connor McDavid leads the NHL in terms of points by a pretty significant margin. And so if the Sharks are going to have spotty defense like they did have here against the Kings, they let in four goals here tonight. There's no sense how many they'll give up to just McDavid himself against the Oilers with that type of coverage. Class dismissed.